Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to have you here today because y'all, it's my favorite kind of video. It's a thrift haul. I know I've been mixing it up with some different content around here lately, but you guys, this is my bread and butter. This is my favorite thing to do. It's to take y'all out thrifting and then come back here and show you what I was able to find. Also today is really exciting because I am partnering with another YouTuber here and y'all already know her. <laughs> It is Andrea from Pine and Prospect Home. You guys, I was so excited when I heard from her and we started talking about a possible collaboration. She is somebody that I've looked up to for years around this place. And so it is such an honor to do this shout out with her. And so she's gonna be showing you guys some of her thrifted finds. So in the off chance that you don't know Andrea, she is a wife and a mom who lives up in Michigan. She lives in the cutest English style cottage. Y'all, her house is everything you could ever ask or hope for. She's got a bunch of little boys running around the house. She has the most beautiful content. She's one of my favorite people to watch and she is a wealth of wisdom and information when it comes to decorating your home and doing things on a budget. She also loves thrifting just like I do. I would highly encourage you guys after this video to go and check out her video. I also need to just like lift her up because she has been so kind, kind of like walking me through some of the logistics of like this whole YouTuber life. I'm honestly just figuring this all out and she's such a pro. And so I've been really thankful to her for helping me. She has been so kind and encouraging and I just love working with these women because so many of them have truly felt like friends along the way. I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the gracious sponsor of today's video, Thrive Market. I just got a new package from them and I'm really excited to show it to you guys. Okay, so I have a lot in my throat haul this week. I'm not gonna lie, I got it all put together in a pile and I was like, this pile is massive. How am I going to be able to get through all this stuff? And I decided like, why am I doing this to all of us? Like, Let's just split this up into two thrift hauls. I did take an excellent trip to the Goodwill bins. So if any of you guys here are not familiar, the Goodwill bins is where Goodwill sends all of their extra stuff. Unfortunately, when you donate your items, you think that they're going to go to somebody who's going to give them new life. The actual Goodwill only keeps a little bit of the items that are donated and the rest of it goes to the bins. And also if Goodwill doesn't sell their stuff in a certain amount of time, they send all of that to the bins as well. So if their stuff is overpriced or it just doesn't sell well, it goes. I love going to the bins. It's a huge industrial building that is filled with tons of bins. And then you fill up your cart and then you pay $1.27 per pound for whatever you get in your cart, unless it's a large item, which I do have. And then those are priced per item. This week we're going to the bins. Next week, we're just gonna hit the thrift stores and I'll be able to tell you what each item was individually. So let's go ahead and go to the bins. And then afterwards, I will show you the stuff I found. I This was a really good trip y'all so let's go all right so here we are at the bins if you guys have never been you guys should absolutely try to find one in your town if you're into thrifting it is definitely the cheapest way to thrift and there's some really cool stuff in the bins and there's also some really not cool stuff in the bins so you can find really neat stuff or really weird stuff or really gross stuff it's just a total mix I did like this huge cast iron Christmas tree base. It did have some rust on the inside and I wasn't sure about how to clean that up. So if you guys have any suggestions for that type of thing, please let me know. I also really liked this Christmas blanket. I actually had it in my cart for a long time and I carried it around and I really debated back and forth about it. But I, would, I decided that it wasn't exactly my style even though it was so well made and sweet and vintage looking. But I'm really trying to be particular about what I bring into my house these days. I did, however, pick up this little dress for the girls American Girl dolls. If I find stuff here at the bins like that, I just grab it up because those American Girl dolls outfits are so expensive. They had a great silverware collection right here. If any of it had matched ours, I would have picked it up. I also really liked this pillow cover, but Lord knows what it was filled with, so <laughs> I left it behind.
This basket looked really nice from one side, but then as I turned it around, you can see that there is some damage to the other side. So I left this behind as well. I did pick up this separator. I didn't show it in the video, but I'm gonna try to use it to separate our cookie sheets in our cabinet. This cast iron pot was cool, but it weighed a ton, so I left it behind. I saw this quilt that was kind of cute. It wasn't really my style, but look, the black on it was completely falling apart. I also loved the ducks and the quails on this pillow, but it was in pretty dirty condition, so I left it behind. And I was so excited when I found this rug. It's huge. But here's the thing, y'all. When you get to the Goodwill bins, you just don't know what you're gonna find. So I did wind up unrolling it just to see how it looked. But you guys, look at Ivy. She was so tired and about to fall asleep. So this is about the time that we left. Okay, so I was thrilled when Thrive reached out and said that they wanted to work with me. Here is the box that they wound up sending me. It's small but mighty. So Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. Their mission is to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone with guaranteed savings on every order. What I thought was really cool is that for orders of $49 or more, first of all, they're shipped for free. Also, they are delivered with carbon neutral shipping and from their zero waste warehouse. They're on a mission to be the world's first climate positive grocery store. So Thrive Market is great for people like us who live in rural towns and do not live close to a health food store. So it's great to be able to have like healthy options shipped straight to us. Another really cool feature is that on the website, you can filter by specific diets and lifestyles. So for example, if you're gluten-free, vegan, or keto, it makes shopping super easy. Finally, a grocery store customized to your needs. So there's two different membership options for Thrive Market. First, it's a month to month membership, which is $12 a month, or you can have an annual membership, which is just $5 a month, and you're billed annually at $59.95. The best thing about it is that you will almost positively earn your $60 back in savings. And if you don't, then Thrive Market will reimburse you the difference. So first things first, I got me some collagen peptides because mama is vain. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what these are, it's for like skin elasticity and stuff. So I just put it in my coffee every morning and I love that these are grass fed, pasture raised, non-GMO and 100% pure. We just ran out of olive oil and so I was happy to get some organic olive oil from Thrive Market. I got some oat meal, oat milk. <laughs> I got some oat milk. I, blah, why can't I say that? I got some oat milk and I'm excited to try this. I've actually never had oat milk before, but they suggested it for me. I got ghee, Himalayan pink salt ghee, which I think should be pretty interesting to be able to cook with. Y'all, we try, okay? But our kids are not always great about eating all of their vegetables. And so I got some little Smarty Pants vitamins to try to get those vitamins into their brain that they're not always getting from food. And then they sent me some almond butter. So I'm really excited to try this as well as a healthy living recipe books. So as a Thrive Market member, you will save on every single order of the highest quality organic and sustainable products. Another really cool thing about them is that if you find a better price, they'll match it. Okay, everybody. So right now, if you use my link, thrivemarket.com slash Kristen Hoffman, you can receive 30% off of your first order. Plus they give you a free gift up to $60. So I'm excited to cook with these tonight. And yeah, let's get back to the thrift haul. All right, so we are back. And you guys, I wanna know, is thrifting something that's new to you? Or is this something you've been doing your whole life? I started thrifting out of necessity. Basically our whole marriage, we've been low income, but I've just learned to love it so much. And also, if you guys are enjoying my videos, please go ahead and subscribe. It really lets YouTube know that you guys are interested in seeing my videos and pushes it out to other people as well. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what order to show these to you guys. I guess I'll start with bedding because Ruby found some really good stuff for her room. First, we found these awesome feather pillows. So I've told you guys in the past that I am doing my darndest to try to fill our house with all natural materials. So I was excited to find these feather pillows with this cotton cover. I put these in the wash, wash them up, and then put these sweet little vintage pillowcases on them. And then these are in Ruby's room currently. I thought they were pretty nice. They're so fluffy and luxurious. Honestly, how much do these things cost if you buy them new? I wouldn't know because I don't buy anything new. Second, 
Ruby was with me when I found this at the store and she was over the moon. So I found this quilt and I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about it. I really love the patchwork on it. However, I have told y'all, I'm just not really a pink person. It's just not really my jam. I do love these little rosettes and everything. It really is precious to me. Y'all, I just cannot turn down a handmade quilt. This thing is so soft and so nice. When I pulled it up, I was like, dang, this thing is big. Also, I already have a bunch of quilts and most of them are for twin size beds. But then when I pulled this out, I was like, oh shoot, this is for a queen size bed. I picked it up and Ruby was like, mom, can I please have that quilt? I want it for my room so bad. I mean, who am I to tell her now? <laughs> the next day she went away and when she came home, she was so excited to find this and her new pillows on her bed. She squealed and jumped right into bed. And so I was happy to be able to give that to her. Y'all, I swear that the Lord just provides things sometimes. I remember I was going through the bins and I was like, you know, what'd be really cool would be if I found some brass candlesticks. But as I thought that, I was like, I have never found brass candlesticks at the Goodwill bins because they're so popular right now and they always sell so quickly. You guys, as soon as that thought entered into my mind, I looked over and not only did I find one brass candlestick, I found two brass candlesticks just chilling in the bins literally as that thought went through my brain. It just blew my mind. So there is this tall one that has the little finger thing, you know? <laughs> something that we do that's really fun in our house that maybe makes me a total weirdo because Josh has to be at work in the evenings for like prayer or worship practice or youth group. There's a lot of evenings where it's just the girls and I, I just try to really have like a cozy night at home. We put the fire in the fireplace and I cook a meal for us girls. Something that I love and Josh hates is candlelight. <laughs> I don't like to have any overhead light on in the evenings. I just like it to be like low lighting and lamps. And then I love to light candles. I just love to make it so cozy in here. So after we do all the dishes and get the kitchen completely cleaned up, I take these little candlestick holders and I put a taper candle in them. And I speak in a British accent and I am the queen and they are the princesses and we turn off all the lights and then I lead them to their bedrooms by candlelight. We're only allowed to speak in British accents. I take them up to their beds. We pray together. We don't pray in a British accent. Some of you guys are like, how do you keep your girls from wanting to buy all this princess stuff? And I always tell them, I don't want you to dress with princesses on you. I want you to actually be the princesses. And so this is my way of kind of like creating like a princess and queen atmosphere for them that they feel super special. This sucker's huge. <laughs> so this is gonna be an extremely epic night lit by candlelight from this honking candle holder. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's a long story just for one candle holder. Anyway, then there's this one that's a cup. Okay, and next I did find a couple of these like little hangers. Somebody's gonna have to help me with what this guy is. My assumption is that it's probably for ties, but I thought that maybe we could use it for belts or something. Right now we just have our belts wound into kind of circles in our drawers. And so I was wondering if maybe a belt would be able to fit in these. Let's see what it says on here. Dante American Walnut. Anyway, I thought that this was kind of cool. I guess you just hang it up in your closet along with your clothing. But again, it, it weighed hardly anything. So I was like, you know what? Whatever, we'll just pick it up and see how we can use it. Second, I did find this vintage hanger and I wasn't sure, is this supposed to be for clothing or is this supposed to be used to hold like a piece of artwork or something like that? I don't know, let me know in the comments. I'm really not sure. Next, I did find a few books. First, I'm gonna start with this vintage book that I found. Jed the Poor House Boy. Let me see if I can find a date on it though. I really loved how this one looked. Oh, you know what? So all of the copyright information I'm seeing is missing out of this book. It literally starts on the first page of the first chapter of the book. But the only indication I see of the age is that somebody bought it in 1954 for $1. <laughs> I have been trying to be a little bit more intentional about the antique books that I'm buying just because I'm finding so many red books. This one's a little bit brown, so I, I made an exception for this one, but I feel like all of the coolest ones that I'm finding are all red and y'all know I hate red. That's just my least favorite color. Besides maybe orange. Orange can be kind of bad too. <laughs> 
I did find these Hardy Boys books. I didn't read these growing up, but my mom would always talk about reading these when she was a kid. Our oldest daughter loves to read. It's my goal to have a lot of the classic series for her. So right now we've collected all of the Little House on the Prairie series, a lot of American Girl series. I have a bunch of Nancy Drew, and I think the Hardy Boys would be a great addition to our collection of books. I also found Magnolia Table at the Goodwill Bins. I could not believe that this was there. Oh, I forgot to mention too, books at the Goodwill Bins are three for a dollar. So I got this for 33 cents, you guys. It does have like a little like dent in the front of it, but who cares? Okay, so I'm gonna be truthful with you. I only have one other cookbook. I honestly just, I've always used Pinterest for recipes, but I think it'd be cool to have something like this. I opened this up and showed it to Josh and he got really excited. I love to cook. However, like many of you, I'm sure, I basically have like four or five recipes that I just like circulate through all the time. I really need to get better about being more creative, but sometimes those recipes that we have are so good. It's like, why would I change when this is awesome? I did find find another easel for our plates. Again, at the bins, this was just super cheap. It does have the brass hardware in here. And so I just figured, you know, it's always good to have these guys and they don't weigh very much. So I figured I would just pick this little guy up. This might've been a weird purchase for me because honestly we have a record player, but it makes like a weird high pitched noise that Josh can't hear, but I can hear. And so I don't really want to play stuff on it anymore, but I didn't want to let these go to the landfill. I found a Judy Garland album, a James Taylor album, one of my favorites. I found a Burl Ives, which looks like some kid has drawn all over his face. And I found a Kenny Rogers album. I love these artists. Josh loves these artists. And I figure it can't hurt to have these in our collection. You guys know that I'm addicted to baskets. I actually watched a reel, I think on Instagram recently, where somebody was talking about this and they called it like their, they didn't say it this way, but it was like a, Forget it basket, I'll say, I'll say it like that. It's, it was an F word. It's the forget it basket. And basically at the end of the day, this mom would kind of take a basket around the whole house and pick up anything that like the kids had all left out and put it all in one basket so that the next day the kids could take everything in there and put it all away. Well, the bane of Josh's existence is that our stairs become kind of a mess. Instead of going up and down the stairs all day long, I just set the stuff on the stairs. And then when the girls get home, I always ask them, hey, take anything that's on the stairs and put it upstairs. Well, do you think that they do that? Absolutely not. <laughs> It winds up being on the stairs and then people trip over it. It's just been kind of a hot mess. So because I still don't want to go up the stairs a thousand times a day, I have decided to designate a forget it basket. I'm just going to set this on the Bentwood chair at the base of our stairs. Hopefully this can just contain the mess so that the girls can just take up the entire basket and put away their stuff. How do y'all get your kids to put away stuff? Because for me, it's like pulling teeth. I've got one child that really cares about her things and is really intentional. And then I've got another one who doesn't care at all. And then I've got our littlest one who is just a baby and pulls out everything all the time. So if y'all have any suggestions for me, please let me know. Okay, and last item for today is gonna be this awesome rug that I found. So let me go ahead and I'll turn you this way. Here is this really cool Persian style rug that I found. Originally I wanted it to stay in this room because I thought it might look nice with our paintings and whatnot. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to put it in Ivy's room. Right now we've just got this giant jute rug. It was from a friend and you can see that it kind of like moves. And so she originally had this outdoors at their house. I think I'm actually going to move it outside for us too. Maybe I can get this put together for you and I can show you what it looks like all laid out because dang, I thought that this was an awesome rug for $10. Something that I really love about these like Persian style rugs is when they have this like fringe on the end. I also kind of love that it's almost got like a little pink tint. I feel like that would be good for the girls room as well. Ooh, and I just saw that this rug is Karistan and I think that these are usually pretty nice, pretty well-made rugs. So I'm excited to see this. And here it is in Ivy's room. I think that it looks great. So I actually looked these up and they are worth like thousands of dollars. So I'm happy I found this one for 10 bucks.
All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I didn't even show my shirt. <laughs> You guys, this shirt was from the bins. I totally forgot to even like talk about this. I found this awesome flannel shirt. Whenever I look in the thrift store or in the Goodwill bins, before I ever even pick up an item of clothing, I always look at the material. I'm sure a lot of you guys can do this too, but I can spot quality material from like a mile away. And I could see that this was a really good and thick flannel. However, the only thing about it that's a little bit weird is that I rolled them up, but the sleeves are kind of short. But y'all, I wind up rolling up my sleeves all the time anyway. So I just have it rolled up. But one thing I do like about it is that it's nice and long. I don't know. I just thought it was great. I also need to get some gardening done right after this. And y'all, I'll put on some makeup for you, but I'm not changing twice, okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna call it for this video. Keep your eyes out for our next video. We'll have a part two. I will show you all of the normal thrift store stuff that I was able to find. And thank you again to Andrea for partnering with me on this video. Oh my gosh, what an honor it is to work with you. I have just been so blessed by you. Again, if you guys are here for the first time, please consider subscribing. And if you guys are interested, you can go over and follow me on Instagram too. My name over there is at Kristen Kahoff. All right, y'all, well, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.